Hello and welcome to this new short little video on SAS where we talk about correlation and regression. At times we may be faced with examining the relationship between two quantitative or numeric variables. The relationship between them, not the variables themselves, but their relationship. Correl correlation can be used to determine if such a relationship exists, and linear regression can be used to study the nature of that relationship. We're going to use SAS to do just that. So let's go ahead and begin by importing the usual stat grades data set. Nothing special. File name, data step. Don't need to change the data at all. Of course, we should probably determine if we import it correctly. And do a proc print. run it and make sure everything looks good. No errors at the top and it's going to pop up with the HTML page. Everything looks fine. Notice we didn't change the other, uh, we didn't change the lasso to other. We're not studying the colleges so we don't need to do that. If we were studying the colleges uh, we may need to do that in the future but we're not so we don't. As always let's go ahead and plot our data I'm going to do a really massive block of code here just to show you some of the strengths of SAS in its graphing. It's kind of odd up until recently saying SAS is good at graphing would get you laughed at. But I'll go ahead and highlight all this and run it. Let's look at the graphic we got. X-axis, this will be the independent variable. Here's the initial grade point average. Y-axis is the dependent variable course grade earned. We've got this broken up into red female figures for the females and blue male figures for the males. If we look, there looks to be a positive correlation between the two. I'm not sure that it is statistically significant, but it looks like there is. Notice that both the initial grade point average and the course grade earned start at zero, and it starts exactly at zero. So how did I get this to happen? Let's go through this code a little bit line by line. These two lines look familiar from 1B. We define two symbols. Symbol 1, we're, we're going to make red, make it a little bit bigger than usual, 75% bigger than usual. And we're going to give it the value star, which actually is the female figure. And we're going to define symbol 2 as blue, make it also 75% bigger. And that'll be the value is equal to the greater than sign, which is the male figure. Symbol 1, symbol 2. So when we do the plotting and down here we set it equal to gender, so it's going to split it up into the two genders. Symbol 1 will correspond to the first gender, symbol 2 will correspond to the second gender. Why is female the first and male the second? The alphabet. These two lines are going to be new. They define two different axes. Axis 1 we're going to define as being ranging from 0 to, ten, uh, to 100 and marks every 10. We're going to actually start it at zero. We're not going to have any padding on the top or the bottom. Axis two is going to range from zero to four. We're going to have marks, major marks every one, and again it's going to go directly to the edges. Offset is zero. We're going to utilize those two axes in the plot statement. The vertical axis is axis one. The horizontal axis, that's H axis, is axis two. The next thing that you'll notice is the legend command. Here we're just saying where we're going to put the legend. Where the position we're going to place it will be the top center and on the outside of the plot. And we're going to use that in the plot statement. Down here we're going to define where the legend is. Now the proc g plot also, also came from um, SAS 1b. And this part came from SAS 1B. What the no frame does in the plot statement is gets rid of the box around the plotting region. Now if you notice, I actually have initial grade point average stated down here and course grade earned stated up there and student gender stated up there. If we didn't, this would just be little g, little p, little a, and little grade, and little gender. To make it a bit more reader friendly, 
we're going to say, OK, that GPA is actually going to be replaced by initial grade point average. Grade is going to be replaced by course grade earned. And gender is going to be replaced by student gender. So that's what all those parts mean when you put them together. It produces this really interesting graphic. I think it's worth the extra steps. OK, now we've looked at it. We do think there may be a correlation. If there is a correlation, it's positive as the G initial GPA increases, the course grade earned also increases. Let's go ahead and test that. We're going to use the PROC core, which we saw back in 1A. PROC core specify the data. We're going to specify the two variables that we want to find the correlation between. And Fisher is going to allow us to get some more statistics off of it. Highlight run. Here's the one page output. Two variables, grade and GPA. We have some summary statistics for both of those two variables. We have the correlation coefficient based on Fisher for the two variables. Grade and GPA have a correlation of 0.33558. The p-value for the test, that, that correlation is actually 0, is 0 0.0006. Since that is less than alpha, we, failed re uh, we reject the null hypothesis, conclude that there is a relationship between these two variables. We have a 95% confidence interval from 0.147 to 0.498. We're 95% confident that the true relationship between those two is between those two values. Again, since the p-value for the test of h naught rho equals 0 is less than alpha, we know that it is not 0. Back in 1a, we talked about the correlation and looked only at the value of the correlation. We didn't talk about that test statistic or the confidence intervals because it didn't make sense. We didn't understand those terms back then. Now we do. So it's kind of nice to go back over some things that we've done in the past and look at it with new eyes, because we've learned stuff since then. So we've got something, or we got a, a significant correlation between the two, but we're not exactly sure. I mean, that's that's good information, but we'd like to go to the next step. We'd like to model that dependent variable, the grade earned in the class, using the independent variable, the initial GPA. To do that, we'll use linear regression. We've seen this before, PROC GLM, state the data, the model, grade is the dependent variable, the Y variable, GPA is the independent variable, and we can just run it. CL PARM gives us confidence intervals for the parameters. Where have we seen PROC GLM before? We've seen it when we were dealing with analysis of variance in the last, in, in, uh, the last video. The difference between this use of GLM, PROC GLM, and that use of PROC GLM is this use of PROC GLM is missing a line. There is no class line here, or class statement, because neither grade nor GPA are categorical variables. So let's run this. The output should be pretty familiar to us, since we've already seen PROC GLMs. Page 1. Number of observations, number of observations used. Spend an entire page on that. Page two is a big one. Here's the ANOVA table. P value is 0 0.0006. Since P is less than alpha, we know that this model does tell us something about the relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variable. If this p-value were greater than alpha, we'd say that this model was not useful. Next table gives us the r-squared, the coefficient of variation, and a couple other things that are useful for a different stat course. We've got the two types of uh, we got two types of sums of squares. If we had more than one independent variable, this might be useful. We don't. Notice that these two tables will give us exactly the same information as the first row of the top table. Only because we have one independent variable, 
one dependent variable. This table is the new table. This gives us parameter estimates. The estimates are here. This is B0. It's the estimate for beta naught. And this is B1, the estimate for beta 1. There's the test statistics, the p-values. Both are less than alpha, therefore neither of these are 0. And we got confidence interval. If we didn't have the CL parm, we would not have these confidence limits. We also have the graphic, nice little basic graphic. The line is going to be the line of best fit. The equation for this line of best fit is 46.415 plus 8.4202 times x is equal to y. b naught plus b1x equals y. The shaded area is the confidence interval or the confidence band for the line of best fit. 40, uh, STAT 4043 discusses that. And the dashed line gives us prediction limits, which are also discussed in STAT 4043. So based on that, those two tests, we know that there is a linear, uh, there is a uh, relationship between these two variables. In fact, we were able to determine what that relationship was. This, these two numbers give us the line of best fit which means for every one increase in GPA, the expected value of the grade in the class goes up by 8.42 points, on average. Now if we look back at our plot, see if I can pull up the plot. If we look back at this, there seems to be some difference between females and males in terms of course grade earned seems as though females did better than males. So let's add gender as one of our independent variables. That's called multiple linear regression because we have more than one independent variable. And since we are doing this by gender, we need to sort it first. ProcGLM by gender means that we're going to first fit the model with females, then fit the model with males, and then we'll be able to compare the two. Everything else is exactly the same as the simple linear regression above. Go ahead and run that. Scroll to the top. Okay, GLM pr procedure for females. 45 females read, 45 are used. P-value for the model is 0 0.0071 model is useful. Scroll down to the parameter estimates. 53.19 is the estimate for beta naught. 8.626 is the estimate for beta 1. On average, for every one increase in GPA for females, the grade goes up by 8.62. Both of these are statistically significant. That is, that they are different from zero. For the GPA, that test actually has some meaning. For the intercept, usually it's not, from a science standpoint, it's not interesting if the intercept is different from zero. But almost always it's interesting if the slope or the effect is different from zero. So that was it for females. Let's scroll down and see what happens with males, 55, 55. P-value is 0 0.0763 which means this model doesn't really do much for the males. We do still have the estimate of our estimate of beta naught and beta 1. On average for this sample, as you increase the GPA by 1, the grade goes up by 4.67. But if we look at the p-value, that p-value for the effect is greater than alpha, which means that it is not significantly different from 0 meaning that we cannot conclude GPA has an effect on grade for males. Scrolling up, we do see that it has an effect on grade for females. It just does not have an effect on grade for males. In fact, we're 95% confident that the effect is somewhere between a negative one-half 
and a positive 9.9. In other words, as the grade as the GPA goes up by one for males, it could actually go uh, the grade could actually go down by 0.5 points, or it could go up by about 10 points. Rather interesting. It's rather contrary to what you may think too. It seems as though the GPA as GPA goes up, the grade should go up. Now, notice that what I haven't said here. I have not said that increasing GPA causes the grade to go, go up. I'm just stating that there is a very strong relationship between the two. It is quite likely that there is a third variable, what's called a confounding variable, that causes both GPA to go up and grade to go up. Now, if you sit and think about it for a moment, you'll think, hmm, that makes sense. Maybe work ethic would cause the GPA to go higher and the grade in stat class to go higher. Could be natural gifts that would cause both to go up. Not sure. That's for a different analysis. For this analysis, we just looked at GPA and grade. And we did all this using SAS. Notice the important uh, processes. PROC core gives us the correlations. PROC GLM allows us to do the regression. I really hope this was helpful for you. Enjoy yourself. Bye.